Hello and welcome everyone again to another video and in today's video I will be talking about Apidus the Hive Lord. Apidus is the Hive Lord like the champion that was introduced five four five weeks ago. I was lucky. I wouldn't say I was lucky okay because when you say lucky it's supposed to get something good but we I pulled the mythical on I think 24 primal uh, prime is it primal shards like the, the 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 red ones. I mean that's the only one you could do and I pulled this champion. Some people say he is the worst mythical, but I think the uh, the uh, the like the, the the dwarf the dwarf is the worst one. Uh, what does Aphidus do? His, his A one basically attack and then place perfect uh, places per perfect veil buff on the ally with the lost attack for one turn. It can go to two turns if you have this mastery right here, master hexer. So if you have it, it might go to two turns. And his A2 attack all enemy in places increase attack before on all allies. Okay, then increase the duration of all enemy debuffs by one turn. This is actually not as as much as I would expect from a mythical champion to be. But to be honest, this increase attack I would rather have it on all allies instead of just him. Like Supreme Kale has it only on him, which sometimes put him as a target to uh, mischief. Where well, mischief will start. Is it mischief the one that steals your buffs? Yeah, it, it just starts stealing it. But when you have it on everyone, it's no longer a target. Okay, then increase the, the duration of all enemy debuffs by one turn. So this one here, you know, sometimes when you like your debuffs, like you feel like you put a two two turns and decrease the speed, and then it's it's almost at the end of hydra turn. Then like you cannot keep it up all the time because let's say you weren't lucky with the by with the first time you put. You put it on them because they just get to two side two turns before you get to three. Because like technically you put it at the end almost of their turn, so they just get it and then get it and then like uh, to remove. So this one will make sure to keep it all the time. So this is actually was way better after I used it than I thought. And his A3, which is technically what makes him viable in Hydra and Spider. It's basically attack all enemy places HP burn. Uh, so this is, you know, like uh, just an HP burn. I believe some champion like Supreme Kale has a way better ability. Like Supreme Kale, HP burn, and block debuffs and decrease the speed on the same one. But if they don't, if they are already under HP burn, he uh, sorry, it's uh, attack all enemy, activate HP burn debuffs. But if they don't have HP burn, he places HP burn on them for two turns. So that's what makes him. More flexible. So if you have an HP burn champion, stuff like Mishinaki, like you know, Mishinaki ally attack, then put HP burn. So he's gonna activate it, which make it more like better version of the HP burn. So it's not just HP burn, like this. This is actually a better version. Now the passive is what makes him output some damage. Is each each time this champion plays HP burn debuff, decrease the target defense by three, stack up to thirty percent. So this is technically a weaken because it's more than cru no weaken is they just just basically take thirty percent twenty five percent more damage, but this is decrease their defense by thirty percent. This is better than cruelty. Like the max cruelty on bosses is twenty percent. This one is thirty. That's a lot. Uh, for each HP burn debuff on the enemy team, increase this champion crit damage by ten, stack up one hundred. So this is for the spiders, okay? Because there is around, I think, 10 spider links. But on Hydra, there's only 40. So you get four, so you get 40%. Any damage, any extra damage is, is, is a good damage. Because this passive is like the, the first one is already gonna make your entire team do way more damage. And we will see that my Ecclesia was able to output way more damage than she used to be just because of this. Whenever an enemy under each whenever an enemy HP burn debuff activate. Increase the champion attack by 55% stack up to 50%. So technically, he can increase his attack by 50%. I have 3 star blessing on him. So I get cruelty just to get more decreased defense on him. And the way I built him is basically relentless. And just get his stats to where I want him to be. Uh, the rank, something to mention here is I always like to have a flat defense as my the rank on my attack champions. Because... Since they don't have that much defense, it helps giving them way more. But he has a decent defense. You know why? Because his second form is a defense form. And I don't use his second form. It's it's basically a CC champion. You have stun here with some continuous heal. You have a provoke with a strengthen on I think strengthen on the on this champion. 
and increased defense on all allies. Uh, his aura is amazing, 35% 30, on all battles, but you're not going to use it. Let's be honest. In Hydra, you're either going to use speed or accuracy all the time. So nobody's going to use these. Uh, when he, I think when he transferred his passive is basically if he gets attack, you place weaken on them. And 35% chance of placing a stun. This one is basically for arena, but no one's going to use him in arena. Let's be honest. So the main form, the good form is the first one. And yeah, let's go and see how will he do in Hydra. Okay. And let me...
looking at that and now you guys could see uh 200 cardial technically cardial yeah it only shows that he did 18 million but without using cardial my ecclesia used to do around 120 to 130 so technically cardial was cardi was able to push around i would i wouldn't say 80 million around like let's say 50 million damage here uh, my mishinaki used to cap around 70 at max million damage so we get like uh 30 million here but now okay afidus i used to use supreme kill instead of afidus the thing is uh supreme kill was doing literally like uh 70 million damage so like assuming like here uh like he has cruelty right without him i would never have cru cruelty so the cruelty had helped also to push some damage here plus his passive with the with, with i think his passive has like a built in cruelty right so uh would i say that he's good well to be fair mishinaki is way better like looking at the run this is like the most you will see mishinaki is way better supreme kale is better so assuming that this is a mythical legendary i would assume it will at least go toe toe to toe with a Krizia. like look at this krisk did 65 million damage well to be fair krisk is in uh hex set so technically most of the damage here is coming from Akrisia because of the hex hex gear. So because the damage somehow goes to the the hex damage go to the champion that has the hex gear. Like it's either here or here. And now okay, let's move into alternative team to this team. So if if you don't have these champions, how would you build your own team uh, with something similar? So uh, I had Cardi a long time ago. I pulled to Hannah Kresk Krizia the last two months. So technically those weren't in my in, in my own team. And I used to do 250 million. I've never used Aphidius because I pulled him like two weeks ago. Uh, before Aphidius, uh, it was this was Gnut's spot because like Aphidius has cruelty, but Gnut has uh, technically uh, a weaken. So technically this thing has built in weaken. So technically they do the same job. Okay, let's save the key and show alternatives to this team. What could you be running? Because I'm assuming like most of these champions are not accessible to everyone. Like I've been playing the game for two years and a half and I get Kresk literally last month. Kresk to Hana, Akrezia, I get them literally last month. I had Cardi for like a year, but I've never used him in, in Hydra. It wasn't worth it. Cardi. So you need something to cleanse and speed increase, speed decrease, attack decrease. We have a champion that can do all of these stuff. Uh, he was a login champion and his name is Nekmo Thar. Why Nekmo Thar is good? You have decrease attack here. You have dec decrease speed and leech. So technically, you know, like Cardiel is healing of his one. This guy has leech, so you can do it the same. We have increase speed, full turn meter. And his passive gives him lots of turn meter as well, plus a speed aura. Uh, and instead of the Cardi, Cardi B, if you don't have a Cardi B, you could always use... I, this is what I used to use, is those two. After I pulled those two... I stopped using those two. Why? Those two just moved to the, the lower tier team. Now, for the DPS slot. Okay. So, uh, Mishinaki is a free champion. Technically, technically it was a guaranteed. So, what is Mishinaki? I think it's a three starts awakened. So, it's supposed to be here. Okay. Mishinaki. Oh, I cannot use it in a team. Okay. Okay. Let's just do it here. So, we would use Nekmo. What is Nekmo? And then, uh, not Oella. I always say Oella. Uh, it's she's a blue. So she, okay, Elva, Elva, not Oella. And then we go, Mister Mishinaki. Where is Mishinaki? Hello, Mishinaki is three stars awakened, so it's supposed to be here. And uh, for the DPS, instead of the uh, Aphidus, Aphidus. What a weird name. Uh, where is Gnut? Gnut, I think it's two stars awakened and it's a green, so it's supposed to be here. Now we need a block debuffs, so this is always up to you. Whatever the block debuffs you want to use, if it's up to me, I would use this. He's in uh, the Monkey King, Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong is my favorite block debuffs champion because he removed the debuffs, then steal them then place a block debuffs, then attack, which means you don't care about affinity, okay? He doesn't care about affinity. And for the last spot, so what was the team basically? And I think it was another DPS. 
so you need a provoke champion usually like i don't run provoke i keep you could, uh, i keep using uh, i use uh shamel in a provoke set and at the beginning of the game if i don't get provoke i just keep resetting until i get provoke so the last spot i used to use shamel or what's his face what's his face uh the guy oh yeah this one this chick if you don't have her you can use yeah, if you don't have her, I don't know. I don't remember her name. You can use uh, Bivald the Thorn. I used Bivald as my provoke for like million years. I don't know why I stopped using him. Uh, well, I stopped using him because he does not have decrease attack. But technically, if you have Necmo, you don't care about that. So where is... I think he's two-star awakened and he is green. So he's supposed to be here. Okay, he's in the vault somewhere. Uh, you can also use a Skull, Skull Lord Vargal. Vargal is like an amazing champion because he can be... Uh, a mischief tank because he has a strengthen which is a unique buff on this team because nobody has uh nobody has uh strengthen so that's a, a unique buff to be a mischief tank he has decrease attack and he has provoke so he can counter mischief he can counter wrath because wrath you just need to keep the attack on him all the time and that's like and he can uh, keep the provoke head provoked all the time because it is uh it's on two turn. So the, the the okay for the nightmare hydra, the key is always to keep your champions above two fifty speed. So when you have decreases speed, increases decreases speed on hydra, increases speed on you, you will uh, you you will go on two turns versus a uh, one turn. So that's like the the main thing. This used to be my team until I pulled these champions. So now this is my main team. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for watching. Hope you guys liked the guide. Uh, if you liked it, make sure to leave a like on the channel. Uh, make sure to subscribe because this is a very new channel and uh, we just throw some videos here and there every, every since in a while. Uh, the build. Okay. To Hanarak. 300 speed. Card DB. 350. Uh, make sure your Kresk is the slowest champion. My Krisk is not the slowest champion. Technically, Aphidus, because I don't use Aphidus in my Nightmare uh, team. I use him in my, uh, what's the below? Brutal? Hard Brutal. Yeah, hard, normal Hard Brutal. Yeah, on a Brutal team, because technically, uh, Kale is just better. Uh, how did I build him? Basically, Relentless. Why? Because uh, why not? That's the main thing. Uh, and you just want to have as much damage as, as possible on him. So the build is 5.3k. I mean, I get 600 from the Blessing. So technically, this is not the, not the most ideal build on him. 243 to, to almost 230 crit damage. Okay, wait. I have some Hydra bonuses. So yeah, this is like the actual one. 5.3 speed uh, attack, two, uh, 243 speed. 240 almost crit damage, 300 accuracy. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? I don't have him booked, okay? The books give him a 20% damage, okay? On each one, which means he could have done 20% more damage. So he did 65%. So 20% damage would be like around 12 million. So he would be doing around 80 million, similar to Mishinaki. No, not Mishinaki. The other champion. Uh, similar to... Similar to okay, no, similar to okay, okay, he would be like at around 80 million damage instead if he is fully booked. Mine is not fully booked because I'm just waiting for CBC and transfer this champion. And something to mention, okay, something to mention here that the second form you only use it if you provoke fail, okay? So this one sometimes comes in handy. Because, you know, like, your provoker just gets represented and you cannot provoke. But yeah, basically, that's it for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. This is the end of the video. If you guys like the video, make sure you like, your channel, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Peace.